Is there a journey, Paul, um, to being an abstract artist? And, you know, sometimes if you look back at the early work of some of the famous uh, 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 abstract expressionists, you know, to take Rothko, for instance, he, he started off with figures of art. And, um, and what was your journey or how was your style and technique evolved over the years and you know where you've landed today with the current exhibitions and the 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 interest is that just part of a journey or do you feel that um the way you paint now and what you produce do you start out saying that this is an abstract painting and that's where i want to end up or is it just that thing inside you that wants to come out and that's what ends up on the canvas yeah, I mean, that, that's a big question. And it will answer, different artists will, will say different things, I suspect. Um, for me, I, I don't didn't set out to be an abstract expressionist. I didn't set out to be anything. I just mm. set out to paint. Um, I was lucky enough to have a father-in-law. My wife's father, Jim Hands, was a, a brilliant watercolorist, RHA from time and stuff. And he used to, he used to say, anyone can paint. And they used to have great discussions around that. And they used to challenge me around things. And he's right. Anyone can paint. It's just got to paint. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. I think the longer you paint, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more you move on. My process fundamentally has never changed. My process and what I want to do was based out of discovery and about... I, I had no interest in creating art that looked like something. Um, photography is very good at that there were artists who were brilliantly technical who would wipe the floor with me Um, Mm -hmm. I just wasn't interested by it Um, I was fascinated by actually the spontaneity of what I was doing and spontaneity of subconsciously picking colour and choosing colour and working with materials that shouldn't go together and just seeing what happened and where it could go and then it ends up as as expression, whatever. Now, many of my paintings, I end up and I can, you know, with landmarks, they look like, you know, a lot of people love my pool bag work. And mm. I do that to keep myself sane every now and again. But actually, mm. I stop putting, putting thing, landmarks in it because no matter how big my paintings were, if you had a little landmark, that's all anyone could see. They weren't, they were missing the point of the whole, yeah. what I was trying to express. So, um, but my process I've learned, I, I, I am very, I, canvases all my all my uh, 90% of what I do is based on the ground so it mm-hmm. fits on the ground it goes around and actually I, I just circle it and I walk away it's like come back to it and walk away and it's so I, I paint in a in a in a I don't have an up and a down I don't have it because it's the mm-hmm. way I look at the world actually it's like you don't have a I don't like the conformity of rules of land sea sky I don't have that um I so I I found myself thinking, I I just found myself, what I actually love is the physical act of painting, of the movement of paint, of working with painting, paint at different types of material, working at different stages of a drawing and not drawing, see what happens when they come together, destroying the the actual physicality of the paint and bringing it back together, um, because actually that's what nature is, that's what we're surrounded by. That's mm. what that's what nature that's you know, every moment is a different, has moved, has changed or whatever. Um and I was fascinated by this because I, I could paint a painting and I come back to it a week later and it's completely changed because the paint has dried, it's changed shape, it's changed colour. Mm.